In the days leading up to Christmas, the 25th, it is easy to be full of excitement and joy. It's easy to be generous, gracious, and just it's, it's an easy time to be in a good mood, it seems. It's an easy time, it's especially when we gather together, we have moments like here at Christmas Eve in the darkness as we light candles, and then on, on Wednesday morning as we gather with family, hopefully, gathering with all of our family and have a, a great meal, but those, are, those are good days. And now we are in the days after that. To be more accurate, we are in the season of Christmas right now. We are in the middle of the 12 days of Christmas. The 25th is the first day, so we are on day five. Five golden rings, if you're counting. And uh, while some traditions you open gifts and presents each day, we have uh, probably opened all of ours by now. And, and now we're, we're starting to head back towards usually scheduled life. And tomorrow is Monday, and many of us are, are going back to work. And uh, it's, if we go back to work tomorrow, though, it will be a weird week with uh, New Year's again on a Wednesday. It, it's be a short week, but still, work. And I would ask, what, what is the attitude that we bring to work? on a Monday. I mean, and it's interesting because we've had this attitude of joy, of generosity, of graciousness during the time of, of Christmas, that attitude that comes so easily. But, but as we go back to, to work, as we go back to, to regular everyday life tomorrow, what is the attitude that we sort of trade that in for? Is, it, uh, is the attitude that we usually have, is your attitude kind of breezy, happy-go-lucky, everything will work out? Or are you the cynical, grumpy one, always seeing problems? Or, or is it just kind of life is hard work and let's get down to working at it? And that's uh, another way to put this. If, if you were one of the seven dwarves, what would they name you? That, uh, to think about that today, how, how do we handle this, this, our attitudes as we're going back to the real world? I, I, I thought we might look at some of the Psalms, because in the Psalms we see something pretty amazing. If you read the Psalms, what you see is people come to God with a certain attitude, whether it, it, it's, it's rage or despair or hope or gratitude, whatever, whatever attitude people approach God with, by the end of the psalm, there's usually a turn. There's usually a turn from, I mean, and you see it very drastically in this 22nd psalm we just looked at. It begins with, I am an earthworm, I am nothing. And by the end of it, it is praising God for gathering all people together. And so there's this ability that the psalmists find to, to no matter where they start, to end up with that gratitude that feels very Christmas-ish, doesn't it? That An attitude of joy and graciousness and generosity. And I think that's a good thing for us to look at, especially right at this moment as we're sort of transitioning off of the, uh, the high point of, of Christmas, the first day of Christmas, and we're, we're getting into uh, the, the new year and all of that. Because in theory, we're continuing to celebrate Christmas. None of you should have taken down your Christmas lights. We still have till January 5th to turn our Christmas lights on. We have 12 days of Christmas, and everyone's Christmas tree should still be up, unless it's turned into a fire hazard, in which case it should come down very soon. That's where we're at. But uh, we, though we still have all of these, this, these days of Christmas in front of us, we still have this, this sense of needing to, to handle our attitudes as we get back to work. And, and that's why we read the Psalms. And we, we gather today as part of our worship to, to practice reading Psalms, to practice having an attitude of joy and graciousness and, and generosity. We, we gather as Christians, not just during Christmas, but throughout the whole year to be able to, to cultivate this. To, to sort of practice this, to, to work at having this attitude of grace and, and joy and generosity to, to mark our lives, not just on the 25th of December, but, but every day of the year. And, and I'll tell you, when I was originally kind of chewing on how to talk about this, I, I, what I originally was writing was inviting this in. Inviting in, in, in the idea, sort of you open up the door and Christmas and sweeps in and you invite it in and, and you sort of invite it to take residence in your life. But 
The thing about inviting something in is that you can open the door again and it can swoop right back out as, as quickly as it came in. And that's not quite what we're looking at today. It's not inviting Christmas in and trying to hold on to it. It's cultivating it. It's practicing it. And that, that's a, a different level of, of intentionality. That, that takes a little bit more uh, to do. That takes some, some, some purpose. You don't just invite Christmas in and try to hold on to it year round. You, you cultivate it and you practice having this Christmas attitude of joy day in and day out. As over the last year, as I've come across research that reinforces the need to cultivate this, for what, what, what I'm finding as I'm reading different social research is not all that surprising, but people who are happy and joyful you know, people who everyone wants to be around because they're always in a good mood, they're happy and joyful, they, they cultivate that. And people who are always in a bad mood, we all know people who are always in a bad mood, nothing's ever going to go right, Nothing. Always things are always going badly, things are always going wrong. Well, that, that's an attitude that you, you cultivate, that you practice. And, and so... While each of us have our natural inclination, each of us have our natural way that we kind of lean, and as some of you might guess, mine is not towards joy. I, I tend to be a bit too serious. But uh, we can cultivate and practice that. We can cultivate and practice joy and graciousness and generosity. Because the difference between people is not whether bad things happen, it's how we respond. It's how do we cultivate an ability to respond to life with joy and generosity instead of negativity. So people who practice joy, well, what happens to their lives? They're more joyful. I mean, that seems a little bit obvious, but that's kind of what... Uh, that, that's how we work. And, and we can see that in, in the Psalms. That, that the, we, what we see in the Psalms are people who are writing these, they are practicing taking the, their honest situation to God and, and finding joy by the end of it. They, they take their problems, they take their challenges, they take what's going on and, and they present it to God and in the end they're able to turn towards finding joy and, and peace. And so that we gather here this day to, to practice doing that ourselves. To, to practice cultivating this Christmas attitude as a way of life. And if you want an example of what this type of change looks like, there is no, nothing better that, I, that can come to mind than uh, the Muppet Christmas Carol. Y'all ever see, Who's seen the Muppet Christmas Carol? Oh man... Y'all need to go. Y'all know the Christmas Carol, right? Dickens' Christmas Carol. And, and, and the Muppets do an amazing rendition of it. Uh, great music. And, and it, it's Kermit. I mean, how, it's, it's, can't go wrong with Kermit. But uh, it's the same Christmas Carol as, as anything else. And, and at the end, the way that Charles Dickens expresses that Scrooge has changed. The way that, that it, it, you know that the, the ghost of Christmas past, present, and future have really got to Scrooge is we, we hear that Scrooge practices Christmas all year round. We, we hear it's not just that he becomes, he, he shows up with the big turkey and gives it to Tiny Tim on the day of Christmas, but, become, but he becomes like a second father to Tiny Tim all year round. It, it changes his way of life, so he practices Christmas generosity day in and day out. So that's what we're looking at today. And uh, how do we practice this Christmas generosity and joy and graciousness year, day in and day out? And, and what I would challenge you to consider is, well, we got New Year's coming, right? New Year's is coming up, and what do, we, what do we all do on New Year's? We have a good time, and then we make our New Year's resolutions, right? I would challenge you to take, make a resolution this year that 2014 be a year in which you cultivate a more joyful, gracious and generous attitude that you would and how you go about that will depend upon what will work for you but as you cultivate this more joyful uh, gracious and generous attitude it might be to start every morning out by reading a psalm to start out by focusing uh, on being gracious and, and thankful to God or what might be far better is to read it over lunch because some for some of us after going through the morning and dealing with Life, maybe we need to hit the reset button at lunch and say, okay, don't know what the, just time to move on and, and recommit to being gracious and, and generous because that morning wasn't so hot. Maybe reading Psalms helps, 
Another idea to be more joyful is to sing more. We all drive on a regular basis, right? Sing more. Pop in something you love and just, just sing. This is something I, I have to do because, uh, I'll tell you a story. I was on my way to church. This has been years ago. And uh, I was on my way to church to lead worship. And I'd had an argument a couple days ago. And, and I found myself rehashing that argument. And you know how when you're rehashing the argument, you know you're right. And you just kind of keep on going through it again and again. And, you get, and, and I got about five miles away from the church. I realized I was going to walk in. I was going to preach. I was going to rant. And, uh, and, and so I did what I had to do. I put on the Muppets. You cannot be in a bad mood and listen to Kermit. I don't think it's possible. I started singing along to Kermit and Miss Piggy. And, and people walked into church that day. I walked in. I put it on the sound system. People walked into church that day were listening to the Rainbow Connection. They thought I was crazy. That's okay. Because when I got up front, I could say, I'm glad you're here. Let's do this. And be in a joyous, gracious, and generous attitude. I had to choose to do it, though. And it was not an easy choice, but, but it, it can be done. And, and so what are the practices that, that you can choose to do that will cultivate a joyful, gracious, and generous uh, uh, attitude in your life? I, I don't know. But, but choose what it is and, and maybe make that part of your New Year's resolution. To be, in, in whatever way you can be, be more joyous, gracious, and, and generous. I'll tell you the, the most striking irony of this sermon is that I can talk about joy all day long, but me talking about joy doesn't bring you joy. I can talk about graciousness all day long, but me talking about it, you have to experience it in, in the hug while the pa we pass the peace. And, and I can talk about generosity, but that's something that we practice, right? And, and so the best thing I can do during this sermon is stop it so we can get back to practicing what is more important. The best thing this sermon can do is point you back to everything else that's happening in worship so that we can get back to singing and practicing joy and being gracious and generous with each other. So I'm going to take my own advice and shut up now. Amen.